I'm going to start with um, my presentation now. Um, just just one minute. I just need to bring up the slide. Okay, can you can you see my slide? All right, okay. So so basically today we're talking about the next generation devices for schools. From the four uh, videos that you've seen earlier, you could see that Chromebooks are they are versatile, they are intuitive and they are very very secure and uh, we're going to go into some of this um, later. So if you look at these graphics, I'm going to give you a few minutes just to, to get um, to understand the graphics, but I'll explain it to you as well. Um, so just, just watch the graphics for now. So it starts from 2012. It starts from 2012. So it actually shows the deployment of Chromebooks in different continents in the world. So starting from 2012, and it takes it up to 2020. So, so basically what this graphics tells you is that if you look at North America, so looking at the US and also Canada, Chromebooks are actually the number one device for schools. So in, in the US, in Canada, in Sweden. So, so let me explain this. So the darker the shade of blue, the higher the concentration of Chromebooks in schools in, in the continents shown there. So you could see that the shade of blue for the US and Canada is very, very dark. So Chromebooks account for over 60% of the schools in the US and Canada actually use, they use Chromebooks. And also you also have Sweden, Netherlands, and also other parts of Europe as well. Now, you, if you look at Africa, you, you will see that it's, it's very scanty. So the only place where you have Chromebooks in Africa, you will see is in South Africa. Of course, Nigeria is now one of them. Um, of course, so this is up to 2020. Um, and also two countries in, in North Africa. So you will actually ask me then, why is why is it that Africa is so scanty when it comes to the uh, penetration of, of Chromebooks? That's really because Google really did not open up the market for Chromebooks um, except uh, in South Africa and two countries in North, North Africa. Now they've actually opened the market, but this has only been open to Google partners and not just anybody. So and so the reason why they didn't open it basically is because they were not sure of being able to provide proper support now they believe they can do that through their partners and that's where you have people like me and digicloud now working um to get chromebooks in into into nigeria so when we did this you will probably ask but we did this for bloomberg schools so when we did it for bloomberg schools we actually went through the back door to get it done for Bloomberg schools. Now we don't have to go through the back door. We, we're going to go through the normal Google process to get this done for Nigeria. So that really explains why you will see Africa is very scanty because Google actually is not opening up to the African market except South Africa and, and two countries in, in North Africa. Yeah, um, I'll move on to the next slide. Now, Google, everybody in the world knows about this, that so far, no one has disputed this fact from Google that the Chrome OS environment has not suffered a single ransomware attack. This is well known all over the world. Now, you also do not need to waste any money installing antivirus software because antivirus is actually built into, in the, into the Chromebook. So your students don't have to be afraid of their devices being disabled due to virus attack. You all know about the Windows environment and all the virus attacks that you hear about, ransomware attack. This has never happened, and everybody knows about this in the world. This has never happened on a Chrome OS device because of they are very, very, very secure. Yeah. Um, next slide. Now, look, looking at this slide, 
this also tells not only uh, is the Chrome environment very, very secure, but also it's also much more affordable compared to devices of similar specifications. Now, the operative word here is devices of similar specifications. So if you take a Chromebook and a device that performs similar to that Chromebook in terms of the specification, you will find that the Chromebook is much more affordable than other laptop devices, but that's number one. But also the administration of the Chromebook is so much easier. Well, I really wish I got the IT admin for Bloomberg School to come and tell you guys. What, what one thing has been telling me is that, Mr. Badipe, I don't even have any work to do. This Chromebook environment is so easy to manage. It doesn't give me problems. I don't, we don't have Chromebooks crashing, you know, and all sorts of problems that you have with the PC. You don't have that at all. We have proved that in Nigeria. So it's not just in US or, or Canada. That also in Nigeria, Chromebooks are affordable and also that um, the administration is very, very easy. And it actually gives schools peace of mind that you can focus on education and not trying to fix um, laptop problems, which is normally what you have with um, other devices. So let, let me go back to that slide. Um, one thing I didn't mention there is also, you can see the percentage it gives you there. It's 57% lower cost per device. Now, this figure that you, you see here is actually not from Google. This is from an independent consulting firm that came up with this. They did their own research and came up with this figure. So this is not something done by Google. This is done by an independent research organization. Now, the other thing about Chromebooks, now from my own experience, I actually use a Chromebook. So I'm actually using a Chromebook for this webinar. I use a Chromebook. Since I started using Chromebooks, I've stopped using my Mac and I've stopped, stopped using PCs. Now, from my own experience, the figures that I hear are even very, very conservative figures when it comes to unplanned outages. I have I can't even remember having an unplanned outage on my on my Chromebook. And I've been using this Chromebook now for over three years. So even though it says there 55% less um, unplanned um, outages, and again, these figures you see here, they are not from Google. This is from an independent consulting firm who did this research. So, so number one, fewer unplanned outages. Number two, you will see less frequent restarting. And what, what that means is that if you take your PC, for instance, you always have these updates that come and then you have to restart, you have to install the update and then restart restart your PC. With Chromebooks, updates are done in the background. So actually, if you shut down your Chromebook at the end of each day and start it up the next day, you don't even ever need to shut down your Chromebook for an update because everything is done in the, in the background. It really gives you real peace of mind. I mean, the last thing you want is you are doing a presentation and a prompt comes up that you've got to update your your laptop or whatever, you don't get that with um, with the Chromebook at all. Every update is done in the background. And if you shut down your Chromebook, the next day you start it up, the update is there already. You won't even know any, anything has been done. And then less time to restart. I mean, you've seen from that video that it takes, a Chromebook takes about eight seconds to start. I don't know how, I mean, I haven't used a PC for years now, so I don't know how long it takes for a PC to start these days. But it's what that means is that your students can come into the classroom and start work almost immediately without having to wait for some updates or, or for the PC to start and, and things like that. So again, this is some three some three percent less time um, to, to restart. And from my own experience, like I said, and from the video you've seen, it probably takes about eight seconds. And also 59% less time spent on maintenance. I've mentioned that already. I mean, I have proof from Nigeria, not even from abroad, from the schools in Port Harcourt. And the IT admin has told me, Mr. Badipe, I, I don't even have, I don't seem to have any work to do with these Chromebooks. They just work, that there is no problem, you know, and, uh, and things like that. So really, this is um, something really, really excellent, I would say. Right, I'll move on to the next slide. Now, Chromebooks also have very, very excellent accessibility features. So if you, if you are visually impaired, if you, if you have hearing impairment or you are physically impaired, Chromebooks have what we call accessibility features that would really help you 
to still be able to work on um, on, a, on a Chromebook. So Chromebook actually has its own native app that actually comes with a Chromebook called Chromebox, Chromebox for for blind people. So it has Braille support, and um, anyone who is visually impaired, it actually Chromebox will help you to read the screen for you and actually help you to navigate your screen while you are using a, a Chromebook. Now, another thing that a Chromebook has that actually comes with it um, is that it has what we call screencast, which means a teacher or a student can cast their screen onto a projector in, in the classroom. So while the teacher is working in the classroom, they can go onto their Chromebook and cast whatever they have on their screen onto the projector for the students to see. Even You can even ask the student to cast their own screen onto the projector for others to see, so they don't have to come to the front of the classroom or anything. They can sit at their at their desk and cast their screen on, onto a projector um, in front of the classroom. Then it also comes with um, um, an app that you can use to record. Um, just just a minute. It also comes with an app that you can actually use to record your screen. So sometimes a teacher. May, may not be in class and wants to record a session for the class and then send it to their online Google Classroom. It, so it has an app that actually allows you to do that as well. It's actually inbuilt into the into the um, Chromebook. It's called Screen Capture. You can capture your screen, the audio, the video, so the teacher can actually sit down at the desk, put the lesson together, and send the um, the video to the um, to the online classroom for for the for the kids to to watch. All right. Um, I'm going to skip a lot of this. This is case study from different schools outside Nigeria, but um, I'll, I'll just bring out a, a few. So this is Chicago Public Schools. So this is a public school that has about 300,000 Chromebooks and you've been used by about 642 schools. So this is a district um, in, in the States and one of the things they found out is that this district, their students, they can learn faster than you can see the figure that than ninety-seven percent of other other schools in in in, um, in in the U.S. So not just in Chicago, but in the U.S. So this tells you that you can have thousands of Chromebooks, and the way they are managed is actually very very easy. They are very easy to manage. So even if you have a million Chromebooks. It's easy for you to manage all of them all, all together. And that's what this school does. So they have 300,000 Chromebooks in 642 schools, and um, they found them really, really ex excellent. Um, and then you have other case studies. Uh, I'm just going to skip them. Um, and then I'll move on to this. So, like we said before, Chrome OS is very, very secure. There's been no ransomware attack um, in the environment. So they provide a secure, fast, and reliable experience with regular background updates, like, um, like I've mentioned earlier. So your kids don't really have to worry about running out of space because everything they do is in the cloud. So they don't store, they don't need to store anything on the Chromebooks themselves. So what that means is that if it's in the cloud, that means they can go anywhere in the world. They don't have to take their own Chromebook. As long as they have a device, they can access their account and all their files and all their school stuff will be accessible wherever they are in the world on any device them, that, that they want to use, even if they don't have their Chromebooks with them. Right, now the big part of Chromebooks, which really makes it really different from your normal laptop when it comes to management, and this is very, very important, managing that environment so take a school for instance you have 100 chromebooks and you want to make sure that you manage those 100 chromebooks so chromebooks come with what we call education license which comes with it when 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 this is bought and uh, this license allows you to manage the chromebook and determine exactly what your children can do or what cannot what they cannot do on the chromebook i'll, I'll go through a few things for you so it has over 500 policies 500 settings that you can have to determine exactly how secure you want it to be, what the students can do, and what they cannot do. Now, one of the things you can do, for instance, number one, is that you can actually determine what websites your children can, can, can go to and which ones they cannot go to. So you can set it in, in, this, in, um, in, the, in the console to do this. 
Another thing you can do, I mean, you, 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 I mean, this is really, really, really excellent. You can actually decide that all the Chromebooks in your school, for instance, if you are, if you have a primary school, you can say all the Chromebooks in our school, nobody will be able to use them um, anytime earlier than seven o'clock in the morning, and after eight o'clock in the, at night, all the Chromebooks will, will be shut down. So you can set this that anyone who has your school Chromebook. After 8 p.m., for instance, if you are a primary school student, after 8 p.m., they cannot use their Chromebooks anymore. I remember my, my son, when he was in school, he used to smuggle his um, iPad to bed and he would put it under the pillow and we tell him to go to bed. We would think he had gone to bed only to find out he had his iPad hidden under the pillow doing one thing or the other. With Chromebooks, that's not going to happen. You can actually set it so that the, after 8 p.m. or a particular time that you want the students will not be able to um, to access their Chromebook. So you can set the time that they can access the Chromebook. Another thing you can actually even do is that you can remotely shut down any Chromebook you want. As long as that Chromebook belongs to your school, you can remotely shut it down. You can remotely start it up if, if, if you want to do that. So if your Chromebook is stolen, if the Chromebook for your school is stolen, nobody can do anything with that Chromebook. Once it is enrolled to your school, so this policy, this license, makes sure that nobody else can use that Chromebook. And one thing you can even do is that you can put a message on the Chromebook to say, if found, please send to this address, because they would be useless to them. They can't do anything with it. That's, that's the power of the license of the Chromebook. The other thing you can also do, I'm only giving you very few of these um, policies, you know, but there's so many of them, you can do so many things. You can determine exactly what the children can do and cannot do on that Chromebook. Another thing you can even do is to say, you are not going to allow any student to use an external USB disk on, on their Chromebook so that they don't bring in something from outside that you don't want them to use. So you can disable the USB, you can disable the USB port, you can disable any port on that Chromebook that you want to disable through, through those policies. So your children can bring in uh, external disk or anything from outside that might, that you don't want them to have. Now, the other thing also is that, for instance, if you take Bloomberg schools, for instance, just like you have JAM, when they do objective exams for JAM, for instance, and they, they, the laptops are locked, automatically locked, so that they can't go on, on any website, you stay within the app that you are doing the exam in, and it will not allow you to get out of that um, app until you submit your, your answers, until you finish the exam, and then you can get out of, can get out of that app. The same thing with this license with the Chromebook. So for instance, in Bloomberg schools, they use their Chromebooks for ex examinations and we, we call it locked down. Once the examination starts, the Chromebook is locked down and it's only the exam paper they can see on their screen. They can't do anything else but answer those exam questions. And once they do submit, that is it. Then after that, they can do anything they want to do. So they also use Chromebooks for examinations in Bloomberg schools, just like you have for JAMP as well. And you will hear some of the testimonials from the children when they come, they will tell you their experience. Now, the other thing you can do with this license I'm talking about is that, for instance, let's say you have 50 applications in your school. By just sitting at your desk without visiting any of the Chromebooks at all, without touching a single Chromebook, you can sit at your desk. The IT admin can install any number of applications on all the Chromebooks in your school by just sitting in his office and not going anywhere. He doesn't have to visit any Chromebook. He doesn't have to go to the Chromebook and say, I want to install it on your, on your Chromebook. No, everything is done centrally. Everything can be done remotely. So you can be sitting in Hawaii on a beach and they have installing applications for your school <laughs> and doing all sorts of things for your, for your school without, uh, without being physically, physically in school. That's the power of, of the Chromebook license. Yeah, um, I'll move on to the next slide. Now, this is also the exciting, the exciting part of, of Chromebooks as well. So Google has what we call the application hub. So this is a hub of different educational apps that have been put together by experts, educa education experts all over the world. So these are apps that they found very, very essential for different subjects, for different things in schools. And they've put, they've collated all this together into one place called the app hub. And, um, and what happens is that you can go to this app hub on your Chromebook and check any app that you want to use uh, for anything that you want to do in your school for, for any subject. Now, the good thing about this is that this app hub also comes with lesson plans, um, different 
materials, different content that you can even use in your classroom that you can just pick up from this app hub and, and use in your classrooms as well. So you, you have the app hub. You also have the Chrome Web Store as well, which comes with Chromebook, you, which you won't have on your laptop. This is actually the Chrome Web Store that has lots of applica applications for your students um, to use. Now, the exciting thing, like they always say, there is one more thing. Can you believe that you can actually run Android applications on your Chromebooks as well? So if your kids use an application on their Android phone, they can also run those apps on, on, on the Chromebook because the Chromebook also has access to the Android Play Store. So your Android Play Store is also available on the Chromebook. I mean, can you believe that? So um, it's, it's, really, it's really a very exciting educational environment for students to learn. Um, I'll move on to the next slide. So, so basically you can see that Chromebooks are good for the IT admin, they are good for teachers, they're also good for your students um, as well. And um, you will hear from the testimonials anyway, so don't let me preempt some of the things that the kids are gonna talk about. I'm about to finish my presentation. Now, Google has created what we call a Chrome OS device adoption framework, which we will use to, for all this deployment. So we're actually following Google methodology. So we have all the stages that we use to do our deployment. So this is all determined by Google. It's an excellent methodology that makes sure that you take care of many of the things that you need to take care of when you're, when you're deploying Chromebooks. Now, so as part of this methodology, Google provides a lot of materials to be used for this deployment. So we have flyers, posters, banners, intern tips guide, user guide. There is even a Chromebook simulator, an online interactive simulator that you can use to learn about how to use a Chromebook even before your Chromebook comes to your school. Um, so there are loads of stuff. This also has a landing page that you can put on your school website to let people know that you guys have started using Chromebooks and you're part of the Chromebook pilot. Now, the other thing it also has is there is a form um, after the pilot that basically has metrics for us to measure how well things have been done so that we can see how we can improve um, for the next stage af after the pilot. So that is also already provided by Google. All the metrics, all the things we're going to use to basically measure the performance of, of, what, of what's been done. And um, yeah, so, so there's so many things that um, Google provides for this deployment, for the deployment of, um, of Chromebooks um, in, in schools. Now, um, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, and that, well, I just want to say a few things. Um, and I know some of you will be thinking, so how much does it cost? So like I said, we've got a partnership with a, with a bank called um, Signature Bank to provide the loan to schools. This loan is expected to be paid over a year. And um, so each device, so the cost for each device is about 250 Naira to 300 Naira, depending on whether you want us to deploy a lot of services on that Chromebook. So is that you just want to have the Chromebook with the license, which, which is not advisable, or you want additional things? I will tell you some of the additional things that um, we provide for you. So if your school does not already have Google for Education environment, we will deploy that for you as part of the pilot. So we'll provide you, I know some of the schools here have Google Workspace for Education already, but for those who don't have, and you want to be part of the pilot, we will get that deployed for you. Now, the other thing we'll do for you is also deploy a lot of the educational hubs that are available in that environment, and we will integrate that into your online classroom as well. So you have all these apps available, integrated into your, into your online classroom for your students to use. We'll also provide training for your teachers and students. And also we will assist your teachers to, to get trained for Google um, teacher certification. So Google has level one and level two teacher certification for your teachers, which you require for you to become a Google reference school. Your teachers have to be trained um, to have that certification for you to be a Google reference school. Now, Google also has what they call education transformation maturity model. So this model actually tries, based on some questions, it will try to find out what level of maturity is your school when it comes to technology and transformation of teaching and learning. So this is called an education maturity model. And one of the things we'll help you to do is to also see where are you on that 
maturity um, model. So what stage are you? So it has different levels. And it also tells you how to go from one level of maturity to another level of maturity. So we're going to help you also to apply this to your school as well so that you can see what you are doing right, what you are doing wrong, and what you need to do to get to the next level. Now, once the pilot is over, um, what we plan to do is we will extend. So the pilot schools, will provide more devices for them, we'll deploy more devices, and then other schools will also join as well once the pilot is, um, is over. Um, now, we plan to start the pilot hopefully by June, by June this year. Um, but that is flexible, obviously, depending on logistics when the devices arrive um, in, in the country. But right now, we're working towards towards June to start um, the pilot. So I'm going to stop here now. That's the end of my presentation. Um, we've got the Bloomberg School kids, teachers and kids who are going to give testimonials about how this environment has benefited them in, the, in their school. So um, I'm going to stop sharing now. Again, let me repeat, if you have any questions from my presentation, from anything you've heard so far, please put your questions in the Q&A document and we'll make sure we answer it at the end of, um, at the end of the session. OK, so I'm going to stop sharing now. And um, so do we have the Bloomberg School kids? Yes. yes. Good afternoon. Okay. Okay, good. Stephanie, can you can you start then? Okay, good afternoon. I'm Stephanie and I'll talk about how the Chromebook has really aided me. One, one minute. Is there somebody else there with you? You have another um, device yeah. there because it's echoing. Can you tell them to move out of the room? Okay. Is it echoing now? No, it's fine now. It's fine now. Okay. okay. Okay, well, I would like to I'll talk about how the Chromebook has really aided me as a student. So one thing I would mention at first is that my grades before and after the Chromebook came, there's a huge significant difference. And the significant difference is a good one. The Chromebook has helped me as a student in my organization and time management. Regarding the organization aspect, before the Chromebook, because I'll be making reference to the before and the after, so before the Chromebook came in, organization as a student for me was an issue. Yes, I can jot on a piece of paper that, oh, I have an assignment due tomorrow, but then the thing is, if that paper gets lost, how am I meant to remember? I can jot on a piece of paper something I, I wanted to like note in class, but if the paper gets lost, that means that knowledge is gone. But with the Chromebook, if I have an assignment due, or if I have a text coming up or an exam, or like a speech I have to give, those things I do as a student, I can just type it on my Chromebook and then how can, the Chromebook isn't as easy to misplace as the piece of paper is. So therefore my organization got better. Also, yes, you might think of the Chromebook as, okay, this Chromebook has nothing, nothing different from a laptop. That is actually astronomically wrong because this Chromebook, in the Chromebook, the power saving is just spectacular. You can work hours and hours with this Chromebook and the battery doesn't even like reduce as quick as a laptop does. I know this before because before this Chromebook came and I actually used the laptop and I can say like with sure clarity that this Chromebook has lots of advantages over the laptop. You know like when, sometimes when you're using your laptop, the thing can get slowed down, but with the Chromebook that never happens, it never glitches and the RAM speed is just on point. Also, as a student, like when I in an English class, I can get novels to read on or something to research on. Imagine a situation where you're given like five novels and in like every sentence, there's a big word you don't understand and always having to check the dictionary like two for seven. Imagine the time that gets wasted. Like when are you expected to finish reading such an amount of novels? But with the Chromebook, I can just, any word I say, I can just type up the word and get answers within seconds. So something that could have taken me minutes and could have wasted my time is just done in a quicker time. So that really aids me as a student. Also in class, it's not everything the teacher can talk about or that I can cover. And it's not everything the textbook covers, but with the Chromebook, you can search up things and broaden your knowledge on a particular topic. The Chromebook has aided me in a student in various ways and trust me, any student that has this Chromebook in their possession is already a high flyer. Thank you.
Um, thanks, thanks very much, um, Stephanie. Um, can we have Farid, please? Um, is Farid there? Good day, okay. everyone. Okay. I'm just basically here to tell you about the major differences between the Chromebook and an every an ordinary laptop. The Chromebook does specific things that only a, a laptop couldn't even try to do. Now, let me give you some different instances. Okay, and you can say that when you're making a research, any single laptop can make a particular research on that thing, but not every laptop is as strong as a Chromebook. It wastes less data and so, so many other things. The Chromebook helps we as students to learn because imagine a situation where you're in class and then the teacher says something that you really don't understand. You can just simply search it up and then you get the answer to it so quickly. So quickly. The Chromebook, the Chromebook helps in the basic everyday knowledge and it aids us as students as well. As we know, as we all know, in a class, in, Education is not all about writing different notes. The Chromebook has all the notes or all the lesson materials we as students need. So we could actually focus on what our teachers are explaining rather than writing and trying to listen at the same time. The Chromebook is a device that gives you unlimited access to the internet and also restricts your searching and stuff like that. You get all the positive parts of the internet and then you can't do the negative aspects. The Chromebooks have something called Senso clients. Senso helps we as Senso helps we as students to trust ourselves, focus in exams. Because think about it, the idea of writing an exam with a laptop is it's something it's not appealing to everyone's ear because they believe that that student can just easily search the internet and get the answers but then with the chromebook it's restricted we are not allowed to search we're not allowed to leave and even if we leave immediately the teachers will be alerted the chromebook is an advantage and any other school that doesn't have this chromebook is actually at a disadvantage because in nigeria we had the nigerian elections some we had the election the presidential election and the governorship election there are some certain schools that refused to resume schools until the governorship election had taken place meaning that they spent two weeks at home and then at the end of the day the election was still postponed but we in bloomby school were ahead because we had online classes and zoom meetings it's practically being in the class but not being there at the same time we could ask our teachers questions. We saw him, he could share the notes, he answered every question, and we still did some extra activities like quizzes. The Chromebook has different applications that help us as students to learn. For example, the Khan Academy software. It, it teaches us different things. There are videos on how to solve issues and stuff like that. Also, at the same time, it gives us quizzes. The quizzes help us to assess ourselves. Thank you. Um, thanks, thanks for it. Um, now we'll have um, Richard, one of the teachers, please. Okay, thank you, sir. I don't know if I'm going to be now. Yes, we can hear you, Richard. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. K. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, it's been three years of awesome experience using the Chromebook. I must say it's been awesome. I think my first encounter with the Chromebook was in the year 2020 during the pandemic. Uh, before then, actually, I was basically using the laptop, my PC, for my IT work. And there were some shortcomings, actually, I was experiencing as a result of using the laptop. But I must say, as soon as I started using the Chromebook, I realized that most of these shortcomings were not there again because I was using the Chromebook, which has not been able to share with you. Most of them actually have been talked about by the previous speakers. Now, first thing, the first thing about the Chromebook is this. this uniqueness and its compatibility with the Google Workspace, which has a lot of applications that have really enhanced my teaching process in the classroom. I have really made me to make my learners in the classroom stay more focused. Now, before I started using the Chromebook, actually, I do save my work and my prayers, my files using an external device like the flash drive. 
But with the Chromebook, I've never struggled to have an external hardware or anything just to make my file storage in it. All I need to do, everything I work on through the Chromebook has been saved automatically on the cloud, just in the Google Drive. So it's been so awesome. Sincerely, I really have really been enjoying the year of the Chromebook. Seriously, at the point, uh, I was saying to some of my colleagues at work because they realized I wasn't using the laptop again. <laughs> Because all I've actually been wanting before now are how they in the Chromebook. First, it is obvious. The Chromebook is just so portable. It's so handy, just like the way I put my mobile, my mobile device. So I found it so interesting. Another feature of the Chromebook that has really attracted me is the exam lock mode. Just like Mr. K already highlighted. Sincerely, a lot of people will say, okay, you can conduct victory examination using the desktop. And fine, you can. But with Chromebook, vector examination has become more effective. What I mean by that, with the lock mode, actually, you can make sure your learners don't have access to any other thing except for that interface of the examination. So it means you can be rest assured as an educator, which I've already expressed. I can just sit back, relax, and I'm sure that, yes, my learners are only on that interface. They are not browsing any other app on the Chromebook. So it's, it's, it saves the stress of moving around trying to uh, to curb my practice. You can just sit back and just monitor the examination without any stress at all. And um, then, well, like I said, I do a lot of IT work actually. So I need something that responds very fast, which I wasn't getting when I was using my laptop. But when I started using my Chromebook, sincerely, within a few seconds, I must tell you, the Chromebook comes up and I'm already locked in. But most times my laptop actually is always frustrating. Sometimes because of the updates, you can even run about 30 minutes, close to 40 minutes running updates just before it comes up. So it was really, really annoying most times using my, Chrome, my laptop actually. But with the Chromebook, which are now I just, I, I, I hardly use my laptop. My colleagues will tell him, Richard, why? I think I'm using this, except for rare cases where I have to just, because I've abandoned indirectly, I must say I've abandoned my laptop. I've just switched automatically to the Chromebook. So these are just a few features about the Chromebook type experience. And also, uh, like I said, the longer battery life, we've already highlighted that during the course of the uh, presentation, it's the battery is just so long, like it lasts long compared to my PC. I'm giving you life experiences, it lasts very long. And also for the security, I believe that in my school, I think around about three years ago, actually, parents do have, they don't have this confidence that, like, oh, we are, we are switching into the digital world. How are their learners? How are their children safe? You understand? But with the emergence of the Chromebook, sincerely, parents don't need to bother. In short, they have this confidence in the school, and the 100% confidence in the school. Why? Because every Chromebook of each learner is being monitored by the administrator of the school. So it means if a learner is going to assign it to do, understand? Whatever, if the learner does otherwise, it will be monitored, it will be tracked down by the administrator of the school. So parents have this rest of mind that yes, they are actually sure that children are doing the right thing at the right time without any problem at all. So with Chromebooks, sincerely, uh, my teaching process has been fun. That's just the word for me. It's been fun, it's been interesting, and it has also made my learners more focused. Thank you so much. Over to you, Mr. K. Um, thanks very much, Richard. And um, can we have um, the last teacher, please? And um, so let's try and uh, thanks very much, Richard. So David, let's try and um, wrap it up quickly, yeah? Okay, good afternoon, Mr. K. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, in addition to what Mr. Richard Abdo shared, I just want to share my own experience with Chromebook in my classroom as, and also as an educator. I teach mathematics and I can tell you that Chromebook has played a very significant role in the life of my learners in, in trying to make them understand some certain concepts. I don't need to stress myself to bring in um, hardware or in social material to the class. All you need to do is allow them to explore the Chromebook. And by the time you begin to see me exploring, I uh, begin to build in them this teamwork, this collaborative work. It has helped my learner to do that, and it has also made me to to uh, to enjoy my class in the sense that my learners now tend to okay, they know this at uh, this class activity involved. We having access to this, we have uh, this information at our team. We have this real life experience at our team. I just want to share information and an example with them. Um, I have a learner which we are trying to teach a concept and 
it was kind of trying to become more more tedious on us and like what do we do next from blue moon somewhere to a just say, can't we just assess this i say that i say hey, how do you know sir so when we started this topic on monday i noticed that i was not getting it i go on research and i found out this and this like i really okay come on but come and give us a, a, a clue let's see and I, to my amazement i could see how the child make help me to make that class so easy and for everybody to understand and that is the power of this gadget in their hands another thing i want to share again is it has helped me to go on paperless as a teacher i can't imagine the last time i go to class okay we are going to be having a short clip test and i want you to tear sheet of paper or i want you to write in your book where i'll go back and sit down and then and i like to see who is following who was not following come on no but in the real time the real sense as they are answering i'm getting my feedback i know who is following i know who is not following who i need to address and who i don't need to address like it also helped me to know who i don't like those shy one that can even answer to in your class you ask a question everybody's raising everybody's raising but there are these people that will never contribute in your class why because they are this shy but when you tell okay everybody open your crumble drop your answer there let me get my mom back in here you ask at my amazing everybody will contribute why because if you have given a platform where everybody can contribute so it has helped me to get my feedback on a real time as my teaching goes on i don't need to wait till after the class i go to check no no i get my information as the class is going on ongoing again um uh, just as my fellow teacher have shared it has helped us as a school to help our learners or to help us as a teacher to better off we as a teacher i came to this school uh, which is a google reference to bloom breed and i came in as non um google certified and because for me to be able to switch into this uh, effect as a teacher i have to take those certification and to uh to my amazement there are a lot of tons of features that i that i needed to learn and i have to learn them in better for me to be a better teacher and well equipped so because I saw my learners being moving ahead of me, I have to move as a teacher to be able to meet up with their level of exposure to technology. And that is the power of a Chromebook in their hands. Recently, our school has launched and launched in, into coding. We have seen our learners going into coding every day, day out and day in. What does that mean? Also, me as a teacher, I have to also brace up to move in order to be able to meet up with the standard of where our learners are moving and that's the power of chromebook in their hands where they have access to move in and move out so in all in all in nutshell i would say chromebook has made me a better teacher and i've made my student a better learner in my classroom thank you so much Right. Thanks. Thanks very much, David. Um, so this really will be the end of the webinar. Um, the Q and A document. Um, Susan, do you want to go through the Q and A document, please, if you don't mind? Just. Um... Yes, sir. I have been going through the Q and A document, and I've been mm -hmm. posting the results or the, the answers rather for each question here. So all the questions that have been put there have been answered. Okay, all right. So so if people can check, but can we just quickly go through them? So just in case, um, just quickly, if you don't mind, um, Susan. Okay, sir. Okay, so we have one question here from Mrs. Bumi Fagule, and she says, does the 250,000 to 300,000 Naira cover all the things you itemized? And the answer to that is yes. Um, she asked the second question and said, any interest on the loan given by the said bank? And the response to that is, you don't pay anything else besides the 250000 to 300000 per device back to the bank. Um, we have another question from Mrs. Laifa Wokocha, and she asked, can an individual or family choose to subscribe to this without necessarily waiting for a school? And the answer to that is, right now, we are only focusing on schools. So those are the questions that we have here. We are we had one other question in the comment section where someone was asking how much it will cost, and um, the response to that was that it will cost between two hundred and fifty thousand to three hundred thousand naira, and as a value added service, if the interested school does not have the Google for um, the Google Workspace for Education, they get that set up for the school at no extra cost. All right. 
Okay, thanks, thanks very much, Susan. Um, so that will be it for today, and everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, we will still send um, the form for the pilot registration to to everyone. Um, so even if um, you don't put your name down today, you can still do it um, after. So we'll send that out um, immediately after this uh, meeting. So that will be it for today. Um, thanks very much, um, everyone, and um, so, and um, have a nice day. Nick, can you can you stay back, Nick, just for a few a few minutes? Yes, I can. And Susan, Susan as well. And um, so everyone else can can leave. Thanks very much, everyone.